Hello there. It says drink me and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I've had an experience this morning that prompted me to come online and share with you a couple of thoughts about having a massage. I had an unexpected detour this morning, something that was scheduled for me to attend um, a meeting was actually cancelled and I was going to fill it up with a whole bunch of stuff to do and just decided I'm going to go and have a massage. So I'd like to tell you about it. It's Valerie Ling, clinical psychologist, director, founder of the Centre for Effective Living. Do you like massages? <clears throat> Most people would probably say yes, and I have to admit that I like it after, but I'm more likely to be hesitant to go for one uh, for a few reasons. And I want to share with you because I think my um, process of figuring out what it is that prevents me from going for a massage when I actually really need it is probably very similar to the sorts of processes that might happen if you're thinking about going to see a psychologist or to get some therapy or counselling. Last night, a very wise person whom I was having a telephone conversation with said to me, <clears throat> or rather asked me, uh, are you actually taking time to stop? Are you actually taking time to breathe? You seem to be online doing these Facebook lives almost every day. And is there an end to it? Of which the answer is yes. Right? I've got, we did February, we've done March, we're, done, we're going to do April, and then you will not see me quite as often. Which prompted me this morning to actually say, okay, <clears throat> it's time to stop. What can I do to stop? It's rainy today. I did go and have my little walk in the rain because I do like that. And I'm not going to run around and do some errands. How about we go for the massage? Because actually for the last month, my body has probably been saying, do something, please. We are achy in all these places. And, well, we, I says my body, I need help. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing about massages and me. You could offer me a free one, and if I know you, I'll say no. And if you're watching this and you have offered me a free massage because you actually do massage professionally, and I have said no, here's the reason why. Number one, there's the whole thing that I have to get out of my clothes. Now, put aside body image issues and all of that, it's a really uncomfortable thing to do. Particularly if you know someone and, and probably equally as hard if you don't know the person. So there's the number one thing, right? And it's like, oh, I've got to go for a massage and I'll have to take off, well, I take off my clothes so that they can get to the bits that need to be worked on. Number two, someone will actually have to physically touch me. Now, I'm not saying I have issues with touch, but it's a rather awkward, intimate space, don't you think? What if I get ticklish and what if it's painful? Number three, what if it's painful? <laughs> Very often because I've neglected to listen to my body when it's actually needed things done, whether I needed to go and see my friend Natasha at Wesley for chiropractor work or my friend Julie at Wesley for, for podiatry work or physiotherapy, I usually will not go in because one, I don't want to know what's wrong and two, it might actually be painful. So what am I up to with my massage number? Number three, it could be painful. And very often when I've neglected it for a long time, it is painful. Four, I've got to push through the awkward, uncomfortable, painful stuff before I get to feeling actually really good. And I know that that will happen because evidently I have just been for a massage and now drink me, um, green tea by the way, actually feeling pretty good. So here's some reasons why I might not put my hand up straight away for a massage, uh, but it made me think actually about what happens when we're thinking about going in for counseling or for therapy. And if we haven't been before, we might be coming in with some hesitations or if we haven't been for a long time, you know, we might be actually putting it off. So I decided to have a mindful massage as I was going through the process of just going through my head and just being really aware of my thoughts as I was going through my massage. What I was aware of is that very quickly I was in pain. <laughs> 
I really was. Um, and I was in pain in places that I did not know it would be painful. And that was a little bit freaky to me. And I started asking questions like, why is that? What's happening? Why am I in pain in places where I didn't know I had pain? But it made me think about the therapy process that though it is uncomfortable, it is starting to identify places where it may you may not have known that that's where the issue was. So you might come in for a particular problem and because we're talking through it and we're going through your history and we're connecting the dots, we might actually uncover some places that might be uncomfortable. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. As I was going through my massage and as the masseuse was working on certain areas, initially there was a bit of an ouch because, well, obviously it hadn't been worked on in a while, but as they started to actually work on it, what I actually started to notice was that the blood circulation actually started to flow. Very quickly, I was actually noticing that that one part of my body that was being worked on was leading to uh, some nice effects that were, I was feeling some tingly stuff in my fingers and my toes were getting alive and waken, woken up. And I think that's what also happens in therapy, that yes, it is uncomfortable sometimes, not all the time, because you are talking about difficult material. However, it does introduce thought processes and clarity and opens up perspective. You start to actually see things and work through things that may have been hidden uh, and may actually be contributing to some of the difficulties that you might be experiencing. So that was the one of the things that I noticed. Yes, it, it was painful, but it didn't stay painful for long. And it started to actually introduce some circulation into me. Then I actually noticed that the part which I thought was the problem, <laughs> the place where I thought was going to be, I was all prepared to say to the masseuse, all right, pull back now, you can't go there, which I usually do. I'll say, no, leave that area, don't touch that, was not a problem. That's because I actually went for a, a couple of months of intensive remedial massage um, earlier this year. It wasn't painful anymore. The, the masseuse just able to work on it I didn't have to say pull back and then I thought to myself good grief that's where I thought the problem was and it really wasn't where it where the situation was it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be and I was able to actually communicate well uh, keep going with it the next thing was there was some parts where I felt the masseuse was going a little too strong a little too hard and I was just going to grip my teeth and bear with it thinking that no pain no gain the psychologist brain in me actually said, no, I think you need to actually communicate what you're experiencing. And I did mention that, um, could you uh, perhaps lighten up the stroke a little bit? I also felt like I was being a bit of a wuss. I thought I should just push through. But when they did, uh, it was quite collaborative because I think what then helped was that the masseuse was able to then get an idea or a sense of um, how I responded to, to the work that she was doing. And again, uh, that is very similar to the therapy process. You can communicate with your therapist. You can talk to your psychologist and, and let them know how you're feeling in the process. We're not going to insist that you push through things that are uncomfortable. Uh, and, and, and if we do want to work through some uncomfortable spots, it's collaborative. Yeah, it's, it's not something where we just take over. Finally, when I actually walked up, well, actually towards the end, I was starting to fall asleep. Um, I was actually feeling, you know, once you, you kind of do that uh, sort of a head to toe situation and you know, the different bits and bobs get worked on, you actually start to, to feel relaxed. Uh, that's probably very similar to the therapy process as well. Session one, your second session, your third session, as the sessions roll along, because there's a relationship, there's an alliance, and you, you're getting more fluid and more fluency and clarity in the things that you're talking about, you actually will start to feel a sense of relief and release. And finally, as I pulled out of the car park, walked out of the massage and actually felt very light and um, suddenly could move in ways that I hadn't moved before, as I was pulling out of the car park, I actually was able to turn to my blind spot, quite deeply turn to my blind spot and realize, goodness me, how long have I actually been compensating for not being able to turn my whole body to look at my blind spot? And again, uh, very similar to the therapy process. 
that once you've actually been through therapy for a bit, you actually realize that there are ways that we might have been compensating that might have been limiting you or it might have been actually causing you to do things in a way that was completely, um, that was limiting to you. Blind spots. It's a pretty good parallel and that when when you've gone through the therapy process and you've actually been through uh, you know sharing deeply personal and intimate things with someone who is trained and who's a professional and comes across with no judgment but is working through it with you you might actually be able to see those blind spots a little bit more fluently a little bit more flexibly as well um, that's a nice one isn't it as I as I reflected on that so when, when I came home, I was actually quite eager to continue to feed my body with the things that were nourishing and found myself wanting to actually, uh, you know, have a drink, green tea, um, have some water, have some fruit, because I think I'd just been through a process where uh, I had, um, I've been really grateful, I think, to get some of those aches and pains and knots addressed. And I was keen to keep going even when I was uh, at home. So that's my little spiel on uh, my day of having a detour and actually going to get the massage to fix some of the stuff that I had been putting off and possibly how it might be relating to um, the therapy process. Catch you later.